Okay, so um, uh, as you will recall, what we are trying to do is uh, trying to get hold of a Riemann surface structure on the orbits of on the set of orbits for the action of PSL to Z on the upper half plane. Okay, and uh, so the problem uh, was that uh, uh, PSL to Z uh, acts with fixed points. Okay, so um, we defined uh, properties of a group of uh, Mobius transformations uh, that uh, that will allow us to uh, form a quotient by that group. Okay. So, let me just recall uh, very quickly uh, what we did last time. Uh, we have uh, so we have uh, a G is a subgroup of Mobius transformations, uh, automorphisms, holomorphic automorphisms of the extended complex plane. Okay, and uh, of course PSL two Z is one such. Okay, and uh, for G, we defined uh, what is meant by. Uh, uh, the notion of uh, G acting properly discontinuously at a point uh, Z uh, in C union infinity. So, this uh, we define this notion. So, this uh, notion was uh, uh, basically uh, if you recall the definition as follows. So, well uh, if Z is the is the point here is the point we are looking at in the external complex plane uh, then uh, the condition was uh, number 1. Uh, the set of points of G which leave Z fixed namely the stabilizer subgroup of Z has to be finite. Okay. So, G sub G sub Z the stabilizer of Z under G is finite that means the uh, there are only finitely many elements of G which leave the point fixed. The second thing is uh, there exists an open neighborhood U Z that is is G Z stable and is displaced completely away away from itself. by each uh, element of G which is not in the stabilizer. Okay. So, uh, so this was the uh, these were the uh, conditions that defined uh, the notion of a group of Mobius transformations acting properly discontinuously at a point. Okay. There are only the stabilizers are finite. Okay and uh, every point uh, and, and, and there is a, there is an open neighborhood of the point which is uh, uh, which is which which is mapped on to itself isomorphically by every element in the stabilizer and there are of course finitely many doing this and for all the other elements uh, this neighborhood is completely moved away from itself okay so this was the condition this was the, the these were the conditions that defined when G is acting properly discontinuously at this point. What we proved last time and, and then of course you know uh, we defined omega of G to be the set of all uh, uh, Z uh, 
uh, where uh, G acts properly discontinuously. I had said okay so properly so I am I am I am using abbreviated notation DIS CTS LY for discontinuously um, or rather shortened notation. So this is a set of points where the G acts properly discontinuously and uh, this was called the region of discontinuity discontinuity. of G okay and uh, its complement in the extended complex plane was called the limit set of G. So lambda of G is the complement in C union infinity of the region of discontinuity and this is called the limit set of G okay and uh, uh, I must remind you that uh, there is uh, there is also a notion of G acting properly discontinuously when uh, the action is free okay namely uh, if G has no fixed points if G has no fixed points then of course uh, every stabilizer is trivial okay uh, and uh, in that case the condition reduces to finding a neighborhood which is completely displaced by every non trivial element of g and a, a, that is by every element of g which is different from the identity okay um, so uh, for example if you remember i told you that uh, this definition in the case of a uh, topological space or a riemann surface uh, for a group of uh, holomorphic automorphisms of the surface or of the space uh, of course if you take a topological space you have to take homeomorphic automorphisms continuous automorphisms uh, then in that case uh, I told you that going modulo the group will produce a regular covering okay which will it will produce a regular covering therefore the group the space to the quotient is a covering space all right the point is that we are we are trying to divide the upper half plane by the by PSL to Z and PSL to Z has uh, elliptic elements and elliptic elements are elements which have uh, fixed points in the upper half plane. So we need to we needed a definition of uh, a group uh, having a certain property which will still allow us to get a quotient which is a Riemann surface even though the group has fixed points and, and the required property is the property of the group acting properly discontinuously which is what I am uh, which is what I what I have dis, uh, what I have been talking about in the last uh, couple of lectures. So what we proved uh, in the last lecture was that you see the uh, omega of G is, uh, is, is G invariant is a G invariant open subset. of C union infinity okay we uh, we proved that uh, it is a G invariant open subset of C union infinity and in fact this is very easy to see because uh, 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 it is very easy to see uh, uh, when uh, you are looking at uh, points of omega of G which have trivial stabilizers okay F for points of uh, uh, omega which omega of g which have non trivial stabilizers uh, if you remember we used uh, schwartz's lemma and riemann mapping theorem uh, to get a picture of how the action of the stabilizer on that uh, neighborhood looks like okay and uh, there was a, uh, a lemma which said that uh, the action looks like the finite uh, the, the action of a finite group of rotations on the unit disk okay so well um, and we also uh, so I, sh I so I should say that omega of G is broken up if you want into uh, let me say omega prime of G and uh, disjoint union omega double prime of G where omega prime of G uh, is the set of all Z in omega G such that G Z 
is trivial, this is a set of points of uh, uh, these are the set of points where uh, uh, the, st the, the stabilizer is trivial ok. In other words these are uh, this is a complement of uh, the fixed points uh, uh, the points which are fixed by uh, some non trivial element of G ok. Uh, so and of course uh, so in fact uh, this, this if you take a point where the stabilizer is trivial then you are going to get an open neighborhood surrounding that point which is displaced by every non trivial element of G and uh, uh, it is of course clear that uh, every other point in that neighborhood is also a point of this type it is also a point which has uh, a trivial stabilizer ok and at which G acts properly discontinuously because the same neighborhood will help to verify the condition of the uh, action being properly discontinuous. So this uh, this subset this is and of course it is also uh, an open subset so this is this is uh, is a G invariant open subset of course when I say G invariant I mean a subset that is mapped by uh, G onto itself isomorphically of course. Hmm. So this is a G invariant open subset and um, well uh, uh, and what about omega double prime G omega double prime G is well uh, the set of all uh, points uh, where uh, G Z is not trivial. these are all the points where uh, there is a non trivial element of G fixing that point. So the stabilizer is non trivial but of course because of the uh, properly discontinuous uh, action that stabilizer is anyway finite ok and uh, well if you take uh, so let me draw a small diagram the picture is like this well if this is well omega of G um, and if you have a point Z in omega of G then uh, what we saw last time uh, so in fact if you want uh, if Z is uh, you take a point Z in uh, omega double prime of G ok. What we saw was that we can find a neighborhood of this point uh, D ok D if you want D sub Z in fact uh, let me call it as u sub z uh, I can find a neighborhood of this point uh, an open neighborhood of this point and a map a holomorphic uh, isomorphism of that neighborhood with uh, the unit disc. So this is the unit disc ok with the point being mapped to 0 f of uh, f of z is 0 ok and uh, if you see uh, the, uh, the 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 group g sub z namely the finitely many elements of g which move uh, I mean which fix z that subgroup the stabilizer sub subgroup the way it maps this uh, uh, this neighborhood onto itself via this map can be compared to the action of uh, a group of rotations of the unit disc about the origin ok. In other words if I write uh, if if I write if the cardinality if, if G Z is has cardinality R namely it consists of R elements uh, uh, it will be a cyclic group ok and uh, if, if 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 a generator is let, let's call a generator as G, then you this group will be up to G to the R minus one. This this will be the elements of the group, where I write one for the identity element of the group. Okay, uh, please don't confuse it with the complex number one. These are all automorphisms. Okay, these are all Mobius transformations. So uh, this is your group. Uh, this is your stabilizer subgroup. Uh, it has uh, n R elements. Okay, and it's cyclic. And that is cyclic also came from uh, our discussion in the previous lecture. And you see this G 
is uh, via this map which is a holomorphic isomorphism uh, this g is uh, can be identified with uh, the group h of rotations okay this group h of rotations is just going to be you know uh, all those uh, so rotations about the origin and so that you know it is a rotation group of uh, time uh, of uh, with r elements okay therefore it has to be uh, given by uh, z going to e power 2 pi i n by r where uh, well 0 less than or equal to n uh, less than or equal to r minus 1 this is your rotation group okay um, and uh, this is a uh, so this uh, z going to this times z multiplication by uh, e power 2 pi n by r is uh, uh, well uh, rotate by the angle 2 pi rotate by the angle 2 pi n by r right n varying from 0 to r minus 1 and uh, what is h under this map this h is actually you know it is it is just a conjugate you apply f inverse because f is a holomorphic isomorphism then uh, you take uh, gz and then again apply f so it is a conjugate via this map. So, uh, the point is that H is acting here and the action of H uh, the group of rotations is uh, uh, if you look at it in terms of this uh, map then it translates to the action of G of Z here. So, in particular if for example, if you, if you want me to draw uh, the picture for R equal to 3 if you want then you know uh, the rotations are going to give me well. Um, let me draw it like this. Um, <coughs> okay, so well, uh, uh, well, if I take a sector like this, then I have this at 120 degrees and another at 240 degrees. Then there are three sectors, and uh, so R is three. So uh, the the action here is. Uh, this sector moves to this sector, this sector moves to this sector right and that that will translate here to well something like this, this how it will move okay. So, G, the action of G z on U z can be is, is up to isomorphism just the action of H on delta okay. So, uh, this is the picture that you get of uh, uh, the action of the stabilizer. Uh, at a point with non trivial stabilizer and this picture tells you two things it tells you that uh, the the those uh, points which have non trivial stabilizers they are isolated because you given any such point with uh, with with non trivial stabilizer if there is a whole neighborhood where every other point has trivial stabilizer okay because you take any point here which is different from z then uh, well uh, it is of course going to be moved by every element of G different from G Z because the whole neighborhood is going to be displaced away and uh, so every element of G different from G Z is uh, is not is in no is in is in is, in ne is never is in no way going to fix this. So, you have to only look at the elements of G Z but elements of G Z are going to act like rotate uh, like rotation. So, this point will go to some point here uh, under uh, and then it will go to some other point here. So, these are all going to be distinct points. So, there is going to be no uh, stabilizer for any point different from z in this neighborhood. What it tells you is that every such point here has a neighborhood which actually lies here okay and uh, therefore, uh, the, the this set of points with non trivial stabilizers is uh, is a discrete subset okay. So, this this set is uh, this is a discrete subset of the extended complex plane right. So, uh, omega double prime g is a discrete subset of a C union infinity. Okay, so this is the picture that we have of uh, uh, how uh, yeah non a point which is having a non-trivial uh, stabilizer how the non-trivial stabilizer acts in the neighborhood of the point okay fine. Now, uh, what was the aim 
the aim was to well uh, the aim was to uh, divide by such a group okay. So uh, what I want to show is that you take this region of discontinuity and you divide it by the group what you get is the Riemann surface okay. So uh, so uh, the aim now is uh, omega g to omega so omega g mod g is a Riemann surface uh, so that the natural map uh, the natural quotient map uh, uh, omega of g to let me call that map as pi to omega of g mod g is holomorphic okay. So, uh, so I am I am going to tell you uh, why this definition is, is a good definition because uh, it is a good definition because uh, you can divide omega g by g to get really a Riemann surface. So, if I do this then the only thing I will have to show is that uh, uh, PSL 2 z acts properly discontinuously on the upper half plane and then you will be convinced that u mod PSL 2 z is certainly a Riemann surface and the natural map from u the upper half plane to u mod PSL 2 z is holomorphic okay. Uh, of course in all these things I am assuming that uh, uh, g is Kleinian so I should remind you so g is called Kleinian if uh, omega of g is non empty okay and of course we are working only with Kleinian groups uh, I, I, I do not want this to be the empty set right. So uh, well so um, so let us let us look at this map so what so what we will do is look at uh, omega of g to omega of g mod g okay. Now of course you know uh, when, when I write omega of g mod g what this means this is a set of orbits this is a set of orbits of g in omega g this is the quotient map all right and of course it is a surjective map I am calling this as pi okay it is a surjective map and uh, the first thing I want uh, uh, want to do is I want to make this at least a topological space and you know the natural thing that one would do is to put the quotient topology you put the quotient topology so that this map automatically becomes continuous what is the quotient topology the quotient topology is the uh, is a topology that is given by the condition that any subset here is open if and only if its inverse image above is open okay and uh, so so give uh, give uh, omega of g mod g the quotient topology topology give it the quotient topology and then it is very easy to see of course because you have given the quotient topology this map becomes continuous pi is then continuous of course and what I claim is again pi is actually an open map pi is an open map. namely uh, it takes open sets to open sets and that is something that is very easy to uh, prove because you take any uh, first of all take any set here you take its image below okay and then if you take the inverse image what you are going to get is just translates of the set by elements of g okay in particular if you started with an open set here okay you take its image below and then you take the inverse image you will get all translates the union of all translates of that open set by g but that is again a union of open sets because the translate of an open set by an element of g is another open set because g is every element of g is acting by holomorphic automorphisms okay therefore it is an open map. So in particular you see what will happen is this will tell you that if I take if I take the subset omega prime g which is an open uh, g invariant subset okay then 
uh, its image pi of uh, omega prime g will will be the same as uh, well it will be the same as uh, uh, this this will be open of course this will be an open subset okay and pi of omega prime g is what is this this is just this is no, this is nothing uh, 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 other than uh, omega prime uh, pi of omega prime g is just omega prime g modulo g that is because you see if I take the inverse image of this okay the inverse image of this will be again omega prime g the inverse image cannot contain points in omega double prime g okay because of the description of omega prime g and omega double prime g. So, in fact this omega prime g I should write is pi inverse so uh, well I do not have a space so maybe I will make a little bit of space here. This duster is <coughs> little more dirty here okay. So, let me make a little bit of space and write omega prime g is pi inverse of well pi of uh, omega prime g because of uh, the fact that every point in omega prime g is a point with trivial stabilizer okay and you cannot get a point outside of omega prime g because these are these are all going to be points with uh, uh, non trivial stabilizer okay and the point with trivial stabilizer cannot be in the orbit of a point with uh, a non trivial stabilizer and conversely because all points in an orbit if you take the stabilizers they are all going to be conjugates okay so if one of them is trivial every one of them is trivial all right so well because of this re reason this is actually going to be omega prime it is just going to be omega prime g divided by g it is just uh, taking orbits in ome omega prime g uh, g orbits in omega prime g okay now I want you to re remember that the g action on omega prime g is free because after all omega prime g is a set of points where uh, g uh, where, where, where it is all those points where the stabilizers are trivial that means g acts freely okay. And we have alway, already seen in this case that uh, this is a going to be a regular covering. So, what you must understand is that this piece omega prime g to for this open subset this quotient map. So, this is just this is just pi restricted to omega prime g. So, this quotient map pi restricted to omega prime g from omega prime g to well it is quotient this is going to be a regular covering this is going to be a regular holomorphic covering okay is is going uh, will be a regular holomorphic covering. So, the point is that when you take this quotient there is really no problem in getting a Riemann surface on this open set the problem is only at those points it is only at those points where uh, the stabilizers are non trivial okay these points are go, they, they are they, they are special they are called ramification points because these are the points where the uh, where uh, your quotient map will no longer be a covering okay in fact this quotient map is going to be a covering exactly outside uh, the uh, uh, the exactly on this open side which is this minus a discrete subset of points okay and it is called a ramific ramified cover okay and a covering the, the usual uh, regular coverings I mean the usual holomorphic coverings are in that sense unramified okay. Because you know of course you know that uh, uh, no deck transformation can have a fixed point. So, the stabilizers are all trivial okay. So, so the problem is only trying to uh, the problem is only trying to you know give uh, 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 so what is the problem so the problem is you take a point like this okay uh, a point like this is going to be in uh, omega double prime c for a point like this if you take the if you take its image in the quotient below 
you, the problem is to give a holomorphic coordinate at that point that is the whole problem okay and that can be done uh, very easily as follows okay so uh, well the uh, the uh, to understand that uh, clearly okay let us try to uh, you know let us try to look at let us try to look at uh, this situation okay. So let us take uh, uh, let us take uh, the situation where we are trying to divide the unit disc by a group of rotations okay because after all uh, around a point uh, which is having a, a non trivial st stabilizer the picture looks like this okay and you know trying to go uh, uh, trying to go uh, modulo uh, uh, a neighborhood of this point going modulo g is the same as going modulo g z you have to essentially divide only by g z okay. So what you should actually study is u the quotient u z mod g z it is quotient by a finite group and u z mod g z is literally the same as studying uh, delta mod h because because of this holomorphic isomorphism f okay. So let us look at this delta mod h so, so the situation is like this so here is my delta uh, so let me write let me draw a diagram so I have uh, so I have the unit disc delta okay and I have h okay and well you all know that if I take delta mod h what am I going to get so you see well uh, uh, let us uh, let me draw the picture for let us say uh, h uh, having 3 elements okay so h then contains uh, multiplication by uh, 1 omega and omega squared which are the uh, omega is a complex cube root of unity okay h is a 3 dimensional uh, h is a 3 uh, 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 group with 3 elements right. So you see then you know that uh, if I take the quotient of uh, delta by h okay for example uh, r equal to 3 cardinality of h is r okay then you know what you are going to get this is going to be see I all I have to do is I have to take any one of these regions. I will take any one of these regions the, these there are 3 sectors okay and I have to just take any one of them alright I have to take a sector like this and well uh, I have to identify these 2 radii these 2 radii have to be identified and if you check that this is this is homeomorphic to delta itself okay because after all you know I can simply stretch and stick it together I will get back delta. So what you must understand is you take delta and you divide by h a finite subgroup a finite uh, group of rotations what you are going to get is topologically again delta you, you are again going to get the unit disc okay. So the question is in this case h is a finite group it is very uh, it is very clear to see that uh, the action of uh, h of course elements of h are Mobius transformations multiplication by some constant complex numbers they are Mobius transformations and uh, 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 it is very clear that h is going to act properly discontinuously because you can see that this is the only point uh, which has stabilizer okay uh, non trivial stabilizer and every other point has trivial stabilizer so h is certainly acting properly discontinuously right so the picture is like this so the question is if you take delta mod h it looks like uh, 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 it again looks like delta and then the question is on delta mod h how are you going to give me a how is one going to get a coordinate okay so for that to analyze that what one does is one 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 looks at it little carefully so what you do is well this is let us look at this as delta okay at least topologically for the moment that is if you put the quotient topology you will get delta there is no doubt about it but you have to make it into a Riemann surface okay. So well so at that is this point which is the image of 0 it is this point that is a, that is a troublesome point that is a point at which it is it is uh, immediately not clear to me as how to get a, a complex coordinate neighborhood because 
why why is that the problem because if I throw away that point if I if I take if I take out that point so I, I put a small circle here saying that this is deleted I have deleted that point so it is so it is a punctured uh, so this is delta um, well this is delta minus 0 if you want okay I have thrown out I am calling this point also below as 0 I am identifying this with delta I am calling this point also as 0 all right and I throw out that then you know this is a, uh, then from here to here this is a this is a this is a three sheeted covering this is an r sheeted covering so in this case r is 3 so it is a three sheeted covering and well it is a three sheeted regular covering that is because uh, that is because of, of this fact here uh, from omega prime g to omega prime g mod g okay that is always a regular covering that is because g acts uh, in this case g is replaced by h and this is the domain I am looking at which on which it is acting okay. So this part is a nice uh, three sheeted regular covering okay and what are the sheets if you want to get this sheets so this is where the point is the point is uh, well this point above this point above is, is called the ramification point okay it is called the ramification point and how do I get those three sheets well it is very simple what you have to do is you have to uh, well if you want to get the three sheets you cannot get them globally okay you cannot get the three sheets globally unless you make a branch cut okay. So what you do is you do not only delete this point but you also make a branch cut here okay you you take the slit uh, uh, open disc uh, you, you open unit disc and the slit you cut out also the origin okay which is a troublesome point then you can see that the three pieces of the cover are exactly these three open sectors they are the three sheets you can you can easily see that you know I can get you know I can get these three uh, as uh, uh, the three sheets of the cover and this well you can at least guess this and uh, well and and you know uh, so you know the, the, these the, these these uh, well these things are not included I mean the, the, the radii are not included okay and of course I am also drawing the circumference of the circle that is also not included because I am worried uh, I am taking only the open disc okay. So you see these are the three uh, sheets of the cover and what is the what is the covering map it is simply z going to z cube it is simply the map z going to z cube that maps each of these three sectors homeomorphically holomorphically onto uh, this 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 slit open disc okay so you see that gives you uh, that gives you the clue the clue uh, that you get from this is what you do is you 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 make this branch cut okay and once you make this branch cut then this can be identified with one of these pieces okay once you make the branch cut then you can identify it with one of the open sectors and then you follow it by the map z going to z cube the resultant thing will give you a homeomorphism of uh, this uh, slit uh, open unit disc onto itself okay so and that homeomorphism okay you can complete it by including the slit, slit okay to get a coordinate map to get a coordinate and that is how you get a coordinate at that point okay so this is exactly what we will be doing uh, in the in the uh, in the quotient case so well uh, let me draw a diagram and explain if so if you understand this very well okay uh, in the general case if h is r then I will have to take z going to z power r right. So uh, the, the whole point of the discussion is that uh, unit disc modulo finite group of rotations is the simplest uh, uh, model for an under for a ramified cover 
with the ramification at the origin okay which is a ramified point outside that point what you get is a nice covering space at that point it is ramified but still even though that point is a point of ramification there is no problem in giving a complex coordinate neighborhood at the at its image okay so this is the simplest uh, situation of a ramified map and what this uh, shorts lemma thing says is that this how it's going to always look whenever you have a finite group acting uh, on a on a point on a riemann surface okay so 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 let me uh, uh, let me draw another diagram here so that it is uh, easier to visualize things so so you see uh, so I, so i am i am in the following situation here is my well omega of g and uh, there is a point uh, z uh, there is a point uh, z which is a point of omega double prime of g so it is a point with non trivial stabilizer so i am just redrawing this diagram here so i have i have a neighborhood so this is z this is u sub z and i have something like this okay and uh, well there is this there is this holomorphic isomorphism f of uh, this neighborhood with the unit disk delta okay with of course z going to 0 all right and i have uh, the quotient map pi which is go and i'm essentially trying to look at uh, uh, this the space here which is omega of g mod g the quotient i am looking at this point pi of z okay and of course you already know that pi is an open map so uh, pi of u z is going to be well uh, an open set it is going to be an open neighborhood of pi of z all right okay now the point is i want a coordinate here so how do i get the coordinate here what i do is well uh, uh, the the so what is acting here is my g sub z okay and you must understand that this pi of u sub z is actually u uh, u sub z mod g sub z okay so this is this is uh, uh, see the image of uh, pi under uh, uz is essentially taking uz and going modulo only g z okay it doesn't make sense to take uz and go modulo g because g will move it so what acts on this open neighborhood uz is only g z okay and pi of uz is going to be therefore this is going to be uz mod gz okay and what am i going to do i am going to do the following thing i have this map z going to z power r and this map is going to map the unit disk onto itself and this is a map that is ramified at the origin okay now what you do is the following you uh, i'm i'm drawing diagrams for r equal to 3 okay so you know you make a you make a slit here along this line okay then well i will get uh, three sectors here okay and these three sectors are going to be mapped to three sector like uh, regions all right and well uh, g uh, uh, the this uh, this g z is going to identify all of them it is going to just identify all these the interior points of these sectors they are all going to be identified and the and the boundaries are going to be identified so the uh, the result is again something that is disk like okay and what am i going to do well i also i also get a branch cut here okay now you see if i remove this branch cut i mean once i make this branch cut then you see pi inverse uh, i can i can define pi inverse onto say one of the sectors one of the open sectors because it's a, it's an open sector because i have cut out this and i have cut out this and that's because i have cut out this and now if i follow it by f i'm going to get one of the sectors here one of the open sectors here if i follow it by this map is it going to z power r i'm going to get the whole uh, 
slit open uh, unit disc ok. So, the moral of the story is if I take if I take this composite map which is apply pi inverse then apply f and then raise it to the power of r ok. Then that maps this slit uh, neighbourhood and it is going to be holomorphic mind you pi inverse the moment I make a slit here the moment I make a slit here it is a regular um, uh, it is it is a regular cover. So, there are 3 sheets in fact there will be r sheets if 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 the cardinality of g z is r. So, I will have a uh, I will have local inverses which are holomorphic maps because it is a regular cover ok. So, this is holomorphic this is holomorphic this is holomorphic. So, the result is I get a holomorphic. So, I will get what I will get is a uh, well I should not say this is holomorphic uh, it is if I if I remember that this this slit region is in the Riemann surface uh, uh, omega prime g mod g ok. So, this is holomorphic this is holomorphic this is holomorphic. So, this is holomorphic and this map can be uh, extended to homeomorphism by including this slit. So, I get a homeomorphism of this with the unit disc ok that gives me a coordinate at this point ok and uh, it is it is very obvious that uh, uh, this coordinate chart at this point is going to be compatible with uh, any other coordinate chart uh, because I will have to test only at other points. Uh, uh, if I take a point different from this ok uh, you have to do a little bit of work and you can easily see that this uh, uh, this coordinate chart is going to make this uh, neighbourhood into a Riemann surface and that Riemann surface structure when you from that Riemann surface if you get the open subset which is gotten by deleting this slit the resulting Riemann surface structure is exactly the Riemann stru surface structure on this restricted to that open set. So, it is not it is not going to create any issues of compatibility ok. So, the moral of the story is that at this uh, point which is the image of a ramification point I do get uh, complex uh, coordinate ok. So, in this way uh, every point of uh, omega g by g has a local complex coordinate and these charts are all compatible. So, this becomes a Riemann surface and this becomes a covering uh, uh, which is called a ramified covering and the covering is ramified exactly at the points above where you have non trivial finite stabilizers and outside those points you get an open subset where the covering is an unramified covering in the in the best sense ok. And how does this ramified cover look at uh, look at a point uh, where which has finite uh, where the stabilizer is finite it looks exactly like uh, uh, the taking the unit disc and going modulo a finite number of uh, by uh, by a finite number of rotations that form a rotation group ok. So, that is the uh, that is the upshot of all this ok. So, at least this discussion tells you that uh, uh, indeed g being properly discontinuous allows you to make uh, omega g mod g into Riemann surface. Of course, in this discussion I have assumed that omega of g is connected ok because you want us you you know we would like spaces to be connected, but in general omega g will break up into components and you can do this you can carry out this argument for each component and then uh, in general what you will get is omega g mod g will be a uh, uh, it will be a union of Riemann surfaces ok such that the the, the quotient maps from each component to its quotient uh, are going to be uh, you know uh, uh, so I will have to if, if this is not connected I have to take connected components I have to take a connected component and work there all right. Uh, so, this tells you that G being a uh, group with a properly discontinuous action a group of Mobius transformations uh, does allow you to cook up a Riemann structure on uh, the region of discontinuity modulo that group G ok. So, now what I need to do is only one thing I need to show somehow that the action of PSL to Z on the upper half plane is properly discontinuous that is in other words. Uh, I have to show that for the action if I if I put g is equal to p s l to z I have to show that omega g contains upper half plane that is what I have to show 
once I do that then you can be convinced that uh, P uh, U upper half plane model of PSL 2 Z is indeed a Riemann surface okay. So, we will do that in the forthcoming lectures.